Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakodash. Yahweh, his name, Heavenly Father, meaning he is, he exists, he to be. Ba'in Hada, Sham name, Yahweh Shai, be name, be God, Son, meaning he delivered, he saves, Rechakodash, Holy Spirit. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great most and ever well, peace and blessings unto the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball. Back at it again with another lesson the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. All right. And uh, this is just, you know, a little topic through the spirit that came up last night was fellowship with brothers. And that's why it's important to fellowship with brothers. It's another reason why it's important to fellowship with brothers because it's going to activate the spirit, you know. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of times, you know, when you get a good fellowship in with brothers, man. You end up leaving fellowship with damn near three, four topics <laughs> that you could go into through the spirit, you know, on your own time. OK, but nonetheless, you know, this is one of the topics that ended up coming up. All right. The brother Yeshai kept saying, you know, the brother Yeshai and the brother Mayaka Allah both was saying the word malarkey. And I feel like I've heard that word before, but I didn't know, necessarily know the meaning of it. So I went into the definition of the word malarkey, right? And I was chopping it up with the brother Mayaka Allah, you know, and uh, through the spirit, man, hey, you know, the, the stuff that the Lord is putting us onto and the stuff that the Lord is getting ready to do for his elect, man, it seems fictitious to this world, man. To this world, it seems fake. It seems like a fiction movie. It seems like a, you know, sci-fi, right? But this is going to be real life stuff. Everything that Yahweh Bashem is getting ready to do for his elect is going to be real life stuff that we're going to see in real life time, man. The scriptures speak about how it's going to be a time of trouble the world has never seen before, man. Okay? Ever since there was a nation. So you got to understand, the Lord, he's getting ready to uh, show us some things that we ain't never seen before. We're about to go through some things that we've never even been through before, man. That we never even knew could happen. Okay? We're coming into a time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? time of trouble the world has never seen before man so Yahweh is going to be doing a lot of miracles a lot of divine intervention you're going to see a lot of angelic encounters a lot of strange apparitions all right you're also going to see a lot of judgments going down in this planet earth and you know hey man it's, it's going to be bad out here man it's going to be like a movie out here man okay how bad these judgments are going to be it's going to be like a movie out here people going to think people are going to want somebody to pinch them to see if this is real life, man. Okay? And that's why we need Yahweh Shai to protect us in these times, because hey, man, the Lord ain't playing, man. Alright? Just to put it plainly. You know? But um, through the Spirit, I got the definition of the word malarkey, right? Because I kept hearing the brothers say this. And this is why you have to, uh, like Scripture said, be not ignorant in any, in any small matter or great, roughly paraphrasing. You know, that's in the book of Sirach. And really, that's going into, like, knowing the scriptures, okay? But even, you know, just doing your due diligence, being prudent, okay? So the word here is malarkey, okay? And it says malarkey, yeah, that's the spirit. Speaking about judgments going down, you got the police sirens going off in the back. All right, that's the spirit, man. Judgments, okay? Mashapat, yum. All right, mashapat, meaning judgments, yum, makes it plural, man. Okay? Um, malarkey it says variants or less commonly malarkey. So you could spell it. It's, it's spelled like M A L A R K E Y. Okay, but sometimes it's spelled M A L A R K Y. Okay, and it says insincere or foolish talk. Bun bunkum. All right, he thinks that, and this is a definition of like the word malarkey in a, in a sentence. Uh, or an example of malarkey in a sentence, rather. He thinks that everything politicians say is a bunch of malarkey. Right. So, and that's how people in the world feel about us, man. They feel that everything that we're saying through the spirit is malarkey. Okay. Hey, here go more cop sirens, man. Them judgments going out, man. Okay. And Jacob's trouble. Hey, Jacob's trouble. Them, them cops ain't going to be there to save a lot of people, man. Because the, they trying to defund the police, you know, and, uh, you know, all that, man. 
Okay, they're not gonna be able to trust in their kings or their governors in that day. Everybody's gonna be doing what they think is best in that day. A lot of people are gonna be strapped up in Jacob's trouble. All right, there was a statistic that came out a few weeks back about how basically like a uh, majority of the United States citizens all have firearms, man. You know, because these are the times that why why are people getting so many guns and firearms and weapons? Because they understand that you know all hell is about to break loose, man. They know it subconsciously. That all hell is about to break loose, man. Okay, but nonetheless, through the spirit, going back to the topic, okay, because hey, because sometimes the spirit is as the wind, you know. Sometimes, you know, like the pastor says, lessons within lessons. But um, anyways, a lot of people they think that what we're saying through the spirit is malarkey, even though we're reading it out of the scriptures. And a lot of people claim they believe in the Bible, they claim they believe in God. But once you start to pull the scriptures out and you start to cut them up through the spirit and they don't agree with it, the first thing they want to run to is, oh, man wrote that, you know. So so just because man wrote it, all of a sudden it's not valid. OK, and yes, man did write the scriptures, but who inspired the scriptures to be written? Yahweh Bashmel Shah. Psalms uh, tells you that. Also, Job. Let's get Job. All right. Job 32, verse 8, it says, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. All right? So that's what it is. Yahweh Bashamashah is the one who gives man understanding. Okay? To write these scriptures. Second Peter 1 and 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of, is of any private interpretation. That's right. There's only one true breakdown to the scriptures. It's not, it's not up to debate or private interpretation or how you perceive this scripture should be broken down. There's only one true way for the scriptures to be broken down. Okay? Whether you adhere to it or not. Okay? But a lot of people think, you know, the Bible is just up for uh, private interpretation. You know, however a person receives it. But it doesn't work like that. Okay, verse 21, it says, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, right? So it wasn't man's will for this to be, for this to happen. It was the will of Yahweh Shemashai for these prophecies to happen, man. Okay, you know, man is not intricate enough to be on point like Yahweh Shemashai is, man, with the scriptures, like the Lord is, man. And there was a guy, I'm not sure of his name. I remember Elder Apostle Gabar did a lesson on him uh, a few years ago. Basically, this man was an atheist, diehard atheist, and he went through every scripture of the Bible. And basically, uh, letters have numerical values. So every um, verse, if I'm not mistaken, ended off with a prime number. OK, with a numerical value of a prime number. All right. So, you know, how is that just ironically a thing hey that's that's the divine that's the divine nature of the heavenly father because the heavenly father does deal with numbers man the heavenly father does deal with numerology okay you know but you have to you have to uh be in a spirit in order to decode it okay but the heavenly father does deal with numerology man all right but anyways a precept to back that up is wisdom of solomon the 11th chapter he does everything in number and in weight. All right. So Second Peter 1 and 21, it says, For prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's right. So they were moved by the Holy Spirit to speak and write down these prophecies. Psalm 16 and 11, it says, The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. That's right. So the Lord was the one who gave the word. Yeah, man published it. Yeah, man wrote it. Okay, of course man wrote it. You wouldn't want the most high to come off his throne and write it for you. Because bodies would be dropping, man. Okay, so man had to write it. You know? And see, that's the thing. Man writes the manual for their car. Man writes the manual for their textbooks in, in their colleges that they are so proud to take part of. But, you know, man wrote the Bible. And now it's the issue. Now it's now it's invalid. OK, now it's not credible because man wrote it. But man wrote their textbooks. Man wrote their instruction manuals that they follow faithfully. You see. 
it just goes to show you the hypocrisy of our people. All right, and humans in general, but especially Israel, man. Scripture is known, Israel is known as a hypocritical nation. All right, but Esau is a hypocrite too. But um, nonetheless, they think this is malarkey. They think this is foolish talk. But that's because they're natural men. They don't have the spirit of Yahweh Shai, so they limit the Lord. They put the Lord in a box, and they try to fit the Lord according to their humanly standards. Like they like they say, this is not humanly possible. Right? There are certain things where they say this is not humanly possible. I'm going to show you that there's something greater than a human, a God, and most of all, the God of the heavens and the earth, Yahweh Bashmashai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man, and his angelic forces, which can do mighty things, which defy the laws of what humans are bound unto. Okay? That's why a lot of times these uh, scientists and these Navy. Uh, generals and you know people who are in the government matter of fact there was a uh, article there was an article that came up um, today with a general from Tennessee he flat out said that the government has conclusive evidence that uh, the Bible talks about UFOs okay something along those lines so you know they know about this they know about the chariots man the chariots is part of their destruction and they try to study the chariots man and they and they they they're just baffled of the dynamics of the chariots and how the chariot doesn't have any propulsion systems yet the way that it defies gravity and other laws like inertia and you know it's it's kinetic movements and so on and so forth it's they're they're mind blown and then the, and even esau will tell you that the technology of the chariots is light years ahead of the technology that they have. So going to show you, man don't got it, man. Man is truly feeble. You know, Yahweh, but we are worms in this flesh. Yahweh Bashmal Shai, he is. That's his name. He is. He exists. He to be. He is the ultimate intelligence. Okay, see, they think their AI robots is on a level. No, <laughs> that's all a part of the work of Yahweh Bashmal Shai's hands. That's just a small glimpse of how intelligent the Heavenly Father is. Okay, but nonetheless, so Esau, he can do miracles, right, on the left-hand side. Esau can put a brain chip in someone, make them be able to uh, talk to the uh, see him, make them, who was a paraplegic, make them be able to walk again, even though they can't do it like, they, like you know, they were healed on the right-hand side. You know, Esau can do certain miracles on the left-hand side, right? You know, going back to Pharaoh and his Egyptians and the Magi's, you know, they were able to turn the rod into a serpent like Moses. But whose who's serpent or whose rod ate up all the other ones? Moses' rod, because the right hand side is greater than the left hand side. And righteousness is greater than that witchcraft and those wicked miracles. But nonetheless, they got a form of power on the left hand side, but not like with the power of Yahweh is getting ready to show on the behalf of his elect, man. Nowhere near close. That's why the Lord said that he's getting ready to show uh, his works like as in the days of Egypt, man. Because the Yahweh Moshe, I best believe he was doing many miracles in the days of Egypt. Many terrible wonders did he do in the sight of Pharaoh and, all the, and the rest of the Egyptians, man. And the Lord is getting ready to make bare his holy arm like it says in Isaiah. So right now the Lord, he hides his power on the right hand side as far as like the true potential of his power on the right hand side. You know, but you about to see brothers fly, bring people back to life from the dead. Okay, run super fast, be able to shoot fire out of their hands, be able to shoot laser beams out of their eyes, shoot fire out of their mouths, be able to ch uh, change the weather like Storm from X Men, be able to read people's minds like Professor X, be able to control the manipulate the elements like Magneto. Okay, you're gonna see a lot of miraculous works more and more here in these last days, man. And see, somebody might think this is fictitious. Somebody might say, oh, you guys actually believe that the Lord's elect is going to get superpowers. You guys are crazy. Da -da 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 -da. That's because you're natural men and you are limiting Yahweh Bashmel Shai. You're putting the Lord in the box. Scripture speaks about how they limited the Holy One of Israel. All right, Isaiah, the 40th chapter, all says there's no searching of his understanding, man. He gave it power to them that are, to them that are faint. You know, and he increased their might, roughly paraphrasing. So there's no searching of the Most High's understanding. You don't you don't know how great the Heavenly Father truly is, and 
his intelligence level and his capability, man. That's why Yahweh Shai said, you know, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe, man. All right? You got to believe. You know? If the scriptures say, I can do all things through a Mashiach which strengthens me, you got to really meditate on that. Why does it say all things? It didn't just say, I can do X, Y, and Z except for this. You know, I can't do that in Mashiach, but I can do all things through Mashiach which strengthens me. Right? Why does it say that? Because it's true. All right? Mark 11 and 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them, man. Right? You got to have that faith, man, to believe on Yahweh Basham Okay? Okay? And you will see great works, man. And a lot of times when Yahweh was healing certain people, okay, you know, there's a there's a scripture where it says how Yahweh didn't do many works in a certain city because they're unbelief. So the more faith you have is the more the Lord is going to show out on your behalf. But when you lack faith, that's the less you're going to see. Isn't that funny? You know, a lot of times people who lack faith, they always want to see a sign. They always want to. But the more you believe is the more you're going to see. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and verse 1. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Think of the Lord with a good heart and in simplicity of heart seek him. That's right. So who are the judges of the earth? Ultimately, you know, the elect. Okay. Really, you know, Esau, Edom, he was supposed to be a judge of the earth. He's been getting dominion over the earth, but he's not ruling this earth according to the standards of the scriptures. That's why the earth is the way it is. Because the earth, the earth's instruction manual is the scriptures. You're supposed to run the earth the way the scriptures tell you to run it. Okay? You know, not shedding any innocent blood in the land, because if so, the land will be defiled and the land cannot be cleansed but by the blood of him that shed it. Right? Um, you got to get the land Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? So on and so forth, man. Okay? And this place is defiled. Defiled. Uh, the vibration of the earth is at an all-time low. Because the earth itself has a vibration. You know? But uh, that's why the Lord cursed Cain, which is Esau in the reincarnation. And what he say? You know, the, 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 the ground shall not yield her strength unto thee roughly paraphrased the earth shall not yield her strength unto thee so the earth is at its weakest point because it is the devil man because he doesn't he doesn't uh rule this place uprightly that's why i could say therefore the curse devour of the earth roughly paraphrasing all right let me get this real quick i gotta get this man change the ordinances man Isaiah 24 5 it says the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinances or, or changed the ordinance broken the everlasting covenant that's right okay and that's what Esau Edom has done first Maccabees 1 49 is a good scripture to back that up Esau Edom came into power beginning with the Greeks all right Esau came into power beginning with the Greeks man okay shit nowadays you see fucking 5g street lights man matter of fact last night i was riding back with the brother okay you know and there wasn't much traffic so we was the only ones at the light you know what i'm saying as far as mortals are concerned and the, the window was down and i'm hearing the goddamn 5g street light sound like a fucking bug zapper bro the shit was literally making a noise like frying niggas man okay see we're not gonna have fucking 5g lights in the kingdom street lights in the kingdom man okay we're not even gonna have fucking concrete streets in the kingdom our streets gonna be paved of gold man and those street lights they're really uh demonic as hell and they're and they're they're really created for warfare they're really weaponry man okay because they sent out the goddamn radiation waves. Literally, first time I ever heard that shit, the street light was making a fucking zapping noise. Excuse my French. Just going to show you how upset I was about the shit. Literally sitting there, and I'm hearing it goes like it's sizzling, man. Like, and, it's, and the best way I could describe it is like it sounded like a bug zapper. 
Like if you ever go to a store and they have those purple lights in the store and the bugs fly on that light and they get zapped, that's exactly what the hell it sounds like, man. Ridiculous, man. But hey, guess what? You got the devil in rulership. What do you expect? That's why this earth is cursed. Okay. Isaiah 24 and 6. Therefore, that have the curse devoured the earth. And they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. That's it. So going back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 1, all right, and 1 where it says, Seek him in simplicity of heart. You got to seek the Lord with the simplicity of Mashiach. You know, you can't come to the truth and try to have an ulterior motive when it comes to serving the Lord. You got to serve the Lord with that simplicity of heart. You got to come with the pureness, the sincerity. Okay? You know, you're not coming... To you know, you're coming to the Lord with tr with a truthful spirit, a sincere spirit, like it says in Sirach 31, uh, Sirach 1, how the Lord say He's gonna cast a wicked person down with a, with, a, with a sincere heart. I'm very roughly paraphrasing, I'm gonna get the scripture. Sirach Ecclesiastes 1 and 30, and exalt not thyself lest thou fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so the Most High discover thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation because thou camest not in in truth to the fear of the Lord, but thy heart is full of deceit. That's right. We got to seek the Lord with simplicity of heart. Okay. Can't be double-minded. Now it says, for he will be found of them that tempt him not and shew with himself unto such as do not distrust him. That's right. So the Lord, if you trust him, if you don't tempt him, you trust him, he's going to show himself on your behalf. But if you lack faith, you distrust him, he's going to hide himself from you, man. Okay. You know, and that's why a lot of these natural men, they don't trust you about your Messiah. So they think it's foolish when we say the things that the Lord's getting ready to do. They think it they think it to be malarkey. But that's because they're natural men. They don't have the spirit. So they don't understand these things. First Corinthians 2 and 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh Messiah, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's right. And I've actually had someone that I knew flat out tell me that that, that uh, when I was pushing something about the truth, they flat out told me that that was foolishness, like verbatim. Okay, but why? Because they were natural men. They didn't have the spirit, you know, because this is all spiritually discerned. If you can't see what's going on, that's because the Heavenly Father didn't give you the spiritual eyes to see. And that's just the fact of the matter. Okay. Uh, Genesis 19 and 12. And the men said unto Lot, Has thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place. So this is when they were getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And guess what? America is the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah getting ready to be destroyed again. I fucking seen a, tra uh, a transformer today, man. Okay? With red hair. And the thing looked like it had tits too, man. But it was a man. You could tell it was a fucking man, bro. So this place is going to be destroyed just like Sodom and Gomorrah because they're doing the same wicked shit. If anything, this place is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. As Yahweh Shai said, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in that day, you know, than for that city that doesn't hear the roughly paraphrase. Okay, so this place is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Scripture speak about evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. All right. But nonetheless, continuing on. Okay. It says, uh, for we will destroy this place because of because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So the Lord is getting ready to destroy this place again. Right. And Lot went out and spoke unto his sons in law. And which is which married his daughters and said, up, oh, get you out of this place for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-laws. Right. They didn't take him seriously. They thought what Lot was saying was a bunch of malarkey. You know? Oh, he, the Lord about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Ha <laughs> ha, you tripping Lot. Oh, man, be quiet, man. You know? And that's how our people treat us. They, they, they think we're mocking them. They think we're playing games when we tell them that the Lord is getting ready to destroy this place. But the Lord is not mocked. The Lord is going to make good his word. See, because Israel, they 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 think the Lord ain't coming back. A lot of Jake truthfully don't think the Lord is coming back anytime soon. They'll say, yeah, I think the Lord is coming back, but not for 100 years or so. Right? A lot of Jake don't think the Lord is coming back. But guess what? He's coming back sooner than they think, man. 
And that day going to come upon them unawares because they weren't on their watch. Okay. Is the philosophies of this world. That's the true foolishness, man. Okay. First Corinthians chapter one. In verse 18, it says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, right? So when we preach this gospel, we preach this truth to those who are in the world, it's foolishness unto them. It says, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of the Most High. That's right. So for us, it's going to lead unto salvation, man. Okay? But for them, they look at it as foolishness, man. But that's okay. Let them scoff. Till it's too late. Just like how they was talking shit, mocking at Noah until the Lord closed the ark. And then, uh, oh, Noah, it actually did rain. You know, because back during that time, it didn't rain back then. It just, uh, it was a dew that came up upon the upon the vegetation and watered all the plants. Just like how you wake up in the morning and you see like it gets foggy sometimes outside and the grass is wet. You know, it's a, it's a natural sprinkler system. Okay, for the vegetation. And that's what all, that's what they seen back then during the time of Noah. They never really seen they never seen rain. So when Noah saying it was going to rain, they're like, what are you talking about? So same thing now in these times. A lot of these people, they haven't seen the nuclear missile capability that's getting ready to happen. They haven't seen Jacob's trouble. They haven't seen a lot of these plagues that the Lord's getting ready to bring upon this place, man. So they think that we're tripping. Their inward thought is that their house shall continue forever. That's why they think that we're foolish. But really, they're foolish, man, because they don't believe Yahweh Basham al Shai. All right. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. That's right. So you got to unlearn all the worldly stuff you once knew. You got to become a fool. And ultimately, just like how they wanted to call those who followed after Yahweh Shai a fool, hey, you got to be a fool for Yahweh Shai's sake, man, so that you can truly be wise. Because the true wise ones are the ones who fear the Lord. Proverbs 9 and 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Verse 19, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the most high. That's right. So the, the true foolishness is the wisdom of this world. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. That's right, man. Okay, so... And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain, man. That's right. So those who call themselves wise in this society, really, their thoughts are vain and vanity, man. If it ain't this truth, it's all vanity and vexation of spirit at the end of the day. You know, so I just wanted to bring that out through the spirit. Our people, they think it to be fiction, man. They think this truth is fiction, but they're going to learn the hard way that this was real life. So with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Asab, Bashem, Chakudaj, the honesty, the apostles, the great Muslim, that well. Peace and blessings to you like the Israel. Shalom and above all.